stroke in the care in the first place. Number one, it's a very big public health problem. all the neurological conditions, stroke is the most common, and it's the most common disabling condition for adults. I always felt like I wanted to, whatever I did, I wanted to make a difference and make it relevant, and so this is a big disease that's important. If we can improve our treatment, we're going to affect the lives of a lot of people. The single biggest problem with stroke care, um, in my mind, is that people don't call 911 when they have a stroke. When someone has a stroke, it doesn't hurt. Generally, it does not hurt. It's just one half of the brain stops working. So in a sense, the part of your brain that's responsible for recognizing that you're having a stroke is exactly where the stroke is occurring. And so people don't recognize how severe the stroke is. So it's critically important that people recognize the symptoms of stroke and call 911 fast. Stroke has two different varieties. One is caused by a blocked artery and caused by a blood clot that blocks off the artery. The other is caused by rupture of the artery and bleeding into the brain. So with the blocked artery strokes, the treatment is to unblock the clot with a blood thinner or a, um, or a clot busting drug like TPA. Whereas if it's a bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke, the treatment is to stop the bleeding. And those are two diametrically opposite. But if you look at a patient lying there who's weak on one side or has a impaired speech, you can't tell looking at that patient whether they're having the bleeding stroke or the blocked artery stroke. The only way to know, right now at least, is to do an uh, imaging of the brain, a CT scan. So when someone has stroke symptoms now, we have to take them to the emergency room. We have to take them to the right emergency room where there's a stroke team in place and where there's a CT scanner immediately available. The patient has to go through the whole rigmarole in the emergency department before they can get treated. Well, you'd think that wouldn't take long, but the fact of the matter is the average time in the United States from the time the person hits the door of the emergency department to the time they get treated is close to an hour. And during that hour, it's been estimated that 120 million nerve cells die. But we do know that the amount of disability that's produced as a result of the stroke probably would double during that one hour time as a result of the added number of brain cells that, that get damaged by that extra hour it takes to evaluate the patient. So what the mobile stroke unit does is it takes the emergency department to the patient. We put on the mo onto this ambulance, a regular fire department ambulance, a CT scanner to image the brain to tell between bleeding and, and blocked artery, laboratory uh, testing so that we can measure the blood thinning level and other things that we may need to measure, and then the expertise, me, that is a vascular neurologist, doctor, a nurse, a CT tech to do the CT scan, and a paramedic to drive the vehicle. And we respond to 911 calls along with the fire department and identify the patients, uh, whether they're having a stroke right there on the site where we're called to. And then if the patient's having, we think is having a stroke, we move them into our mobile stroke unit and do the CT scan. And if the CT scan shows that it's a blocked artery stroke, we can deliver TPA. If it shows that it's a bleeding stroke, then we do other things like lower the blood pressure and other measures. But um, the most important thing is that if it's a, a blocked artery stroke, we can give TPA. If we can treat patients an hour earlier as a result of this effort, their outcomes will be better. We are developing telemedicine capability where essentially you've got a camera on your computer that's taking a picture of you and uh, there's a camera in the ambulance that is taking a picture of the patient. So it's just like being with the physician in person. I can ask them questions. 
So I can zoom in and see the patient's face. So I can essentially do the whole neurologic exam remotely. Then I can see the CT scan that's done on the mobile stroke unit, gets pushed over to my computer. I can see it on my computer. That's what telemedicine will do. It's all about preventing downstream rehabilitation needs. So if you dispatch this mobile stroke unit and the patient does better, yes, there's an upfront cost, but that patient's then not going to a nursing home, they're not going to a skilled nursing facility, they may not need as much physical therapy afterwards, so the long-term expenses of their healthcare bill are not as great. The extra cost of transporting a patient in a vehicle like this and paying to equip with a CT scanner or everything like else, five or six of these in a the city, well, that would cost several million dollars. But a stroke costs $200,000 to the healthcare system on average. So if you could just save some of that money by reducing your rehab needs, then that would balance out the upfront costs to purchase that five or six CT scanners. But the benefits are that uh, people's long-term care costs are going to be less. So if you calculate the amount, that's going to be a pretty big amount because a stroke costs, um, as I said, about $200,000 to the healthcare system for each stroke. And if you could reduce that by, you know, 25 or 50 percent, you're going to save, you know, 50 to $100,000, which is a lot of money per patient. The first patient we had was a 30-year-old woman who um, just walked out of the bathroom and collapsed. And we got there, it wasn't clear what was going on. She just was sort of semi-conscious and she was that slurred speech. She was weak all over. And, um, you know, it, it, to a neurologist, particularly one who is a specialist in stroke, there aren't too many things that cause sudden loss of, of ability to move without making the person totally unconscious. I, I would guess that definitely there was not a neurologist. It might not have been identified as even being a stroke. And um, if it was, people might not have identified how urgent it was. And uh, fortunately, we got to the, her room uh, within an hour of the symptom onset. She was treated within 70 minutes of symptom onset. I might add that only 1% of stroke patients are treated within that first hour or so after symptom onset right now in the United States. So the mobile stroke unit, as I mentioned before, moves everything faster. We were able to treat her in about 70 minutes and um, she eventually completely recovered. I felt like if this is ever going to be a practical thing for the fire department to buy onto, it's got to pretty much be the same as the typical fire department ambulance. And there's no reason it can't be. As Fraser showed us, they can easily put the CT scanner on a standard ambulance. And there's enough room for the patient and the staff to be back there to take care of them. I've realized that this is actually pretty straightforward to do it. The fire department would have several of these in their, in their fire stations and it would be embedded all within the fire so I think that's what's eventually going to happen. I've been in the academic world my whole career. I worked at um, the University of Texas Medical School here in Houston, uh, where I was chairman of the Department of Neurology, so I've done that. But I decided that I'm 68 when I made this decision. I was 68 years old. I figured I had a few more years left and I wanted to take on a second career, so to speak, or something that I could do myself that uh, I thought would make a difference. I mean, it's my life's work. It's taking, it's, it's my career is developing new stroke therapies. So that's what I do, and that's what I know how to do, and that's what I do best now. And this is the first uh, such uh, uh, project in the country. So uh, I believe that 10 years from now, people all over the country and cities all over the country are gonna do what we're doing here in Houston. I'm Dr. James Grotta, and I'm the director of the Mobile 
Stroke Unit Consortium here at Memorial Hermann Hospital at the Texas Medical Center. 